Antibiotics versus steroids. This is something steroids can do. I already mentioned the 17 alpha alkylated orals. If you have something like an anadrol or something like a dianabol and you're using these perpetually around the clock, like not only is your liver gonna get nuked, however, this is going to have significant deleterious impact to your appetite, your gut health, etc. Now, what's up, guys? Derek, moreplates18.com. Today, we're going to be talking about Gordon Ryan and his whining about stomach issues. He made a post recently talking about it. We're on his Instagram right now, and as you can see, I see a lot of people bitching about my upcoming exhibition with Philly Fresh UFC on flow grappling, saying I never fight high level guys and all I do is bitch about my tummy ache. Remember a few things, I owe you nothing. I've been dealing with the stomach issue caused by prolonged antibiotic use for the last four years. In those four years, I am unbeaten and have beaten more ADCC medalists in that time frame than anyone on earth has in their entire careers. For those who don't seem to believe me, here are some of my recent tests. If you're too stupid to read them, don't comment. Take a look at the in control brackets then at the current level brackets. All I have to say is people better hope I don't end up getting better. I was easily beating you all like this. Imagine when I'm healthy. So you see the mycotoxin summary here. We have an array of different um, values that are significantly exceeding what would otherwise be considered high slash problematic as well as his urine creatinine, which would otherwise potentially indicate some level of kidney stress and or you know, more likely just, you know, training hard and or, you know, muscle breakdown essentially, or, you know, like diet related, you know, protein, creatine intake, etc. It's not like this is a huge red flag, frankly, but it's worth noting nonetheless, because a lot of people tag me because they, <laughs> they want to hear my opinion on, is this guy's gut issues caused by steroid abuse? Because obviously he's pretty fucking saucy. And um, he's been dealing with this shit for a while. Is he just cranking out of his mind and this is what's actually causing it? And he's using this as a cover up. We'll be getting into that after dissecting some of these results here. So we scroll over again. We see more levels circled in red, things that are problematic environmental toxins, environmental toxins, other pesticides and herbicides, phthalate metabolites. Here's just a breakdown of the metabolic markers in urine, reference range, description for uh, different intestinal microbial overgrowth. Indicators here we have uh, HP, HPA, Clostridia marker. Um, and you can see the uh, lower limit of normal, upper limit of normal, but moving forward, we have parabens, acrylic metabolites. We have volatile organic compounds, urine creatinine mentioned again, same value again. We have uh, mycotoxins complete list breakdown. We have the um, trichothecenes. I haven't even heard of this one. We have basically a pretty elaborate breakdown of all kinds of toxins in this guy's body that could otherwise be leading to his gastrointestinal issues. And um, in the comments section, as you would expect, there's a lot of, uh, it's a bit of, a bit of a mixed bag, although, you know, mo mostly positive because it's, you know, his page after all. And he is, you know, this is a longstanding issue. It's not like he's just making this up out of thin air or some shit. Uh, this guy, uh, lions don't concern themselves with sheep. Don't, no need to explain yourself to peons. Um, something in a different language, not even going to attempt it. Kelly Slater, got to rebuild that gut when you get through all these antibiotics, long-term no good. So we'll be touching on that shortly. Although this guy mentioned steroid kills, uh, raw kraut and pickle juice from now on says, uh, big tits McGee, take your stomach to court. It can't legally ache without your consent. <laughs> Don't feed the trolls. Everything you've done on the mat speaks for itself. I'm a doctor and all your levels are fine. <laughs> uh, that's funny. I have a girlfriend. See, I like to pretend things about life that aren't real too. I know Derek has already dealt with this, but at least I'll have something to watch later tonight when he makes a video. Here we fucking go. A lot more tags from me in this too, basically asking like, what do you think about this? I got a lot of DMs saying, is this steroid use? What do you think? Uh, man, I was on antibiotics for just 10 days. And by the way, I'm just giving some more context here before I give my opinion. Um, you proved yourself to be the best with even with health issues. And once you're hundred percent, I can't even imagine what you'll do. Can't wait to see you back at it, man. I was on antibiotics for just 10 days and had the worst stomach pain in my life. Been dealing with gastritis for almost three months now. It's no joke. This was caused by steroids, heavily upvoted 64 likes. Let's see what the thread says, uh, up at the top we have. And how do you know that exactly? Thanks IG doc. <laughs> 
hey man, there's no way this was caused by roids unless Gordon has the most unfortunate genetics of all time. You have to understand that you can take massive amounts of gear and not end up with anything resembling the severity of GI distress. Steroids are injected, doesn't go through the digestive tract, you're a bright one. So just because you inject something, it doesn't necessarily mean that it bypasses um, metabolism that would otherwise not cause like issues with bile reflux or shit like that. However, 17 alpha alkylated steroids are going to be the main issue here that would result in something even resembling what he's dealing with. So we'll be getting to that shortly. Uh, let's see, if that were true, then the mats at Atos would literally be an enormous puke bucket. <laughs> uh, here's a bad take on something steroids don't do. These panels are exactly from someone taking Tren. I'm not judging you, it's an advice. I also used and had an inflamed stomach. I hope you get better. Everyone's on steroids, Nate Diaz. So yeah, like frankly, being on androgens perpetually is not going to help the situation. It may exacerbate it. However, when it comes to what would cause something even rel related to this whatsoever, it would be this guy, that urine creatinine level is very concerning for your kidneys, man. I truly hope that gets under control quickly. It's not that high and there isn't the rest. Like we don't know what is like actual like cystatin C calculated glomerular filtration is, which would otherwise be a gold standard for assessing inulin clearance, which would be representative of actual kidney function. So I wouldn't use this creatinine as a representative measure of, oh, this guy's kidneys are fucked because that's what people often think when they see elevated creatinine, but in somebody who's muscle bound as fuck and very, very like, you know, sports driven and doing shit in the gym, um, it's kind of misleading to be like your creatinine's high, therefore your kidneys are fucked. So yeah, I will give them the benefit of the doubt on that because that's the only thing really mentioned as far as like kidney parameters that can actually be extrapolated here. But anyways, <laughs> check this out at more plates, more dates. I got a lot of DMs about this shit, a few tags, but more, more plates, more dates, do your thing. Um, so basically all these stomach issues you have posted are also symptoms of steroid abuse, shrug emoji. Yeah, a lot of different uh, speculative comments about steroids. This guy down here, we have, I just saw it like two fucking seconds ago and then it popped off the page. Um, can't seem to find it. There was a guy with a check, a verified check saying steroids. Basically, here's another guy caused by prolonged antibiotic use, LMFAO, as if, you know, implying steroids. Imagine shit like penicillin did this. Wow, hope you heal up, man. So a lot of comments saying, you know, shitty, you know, hope to see you get better, blah, blah, blah. A lot of people saying it's steroids, not antibiotics. So personally, what do I think? Um, I did a video a while ago on his, uh, on his uh, speculated hormone use. Uh, BJJ Phenom, Gordon Ryan, 163 to 232 in 18 months. Now you're not. This was back in November 29, 2020, almost a year ago at this point. Check it out if you want to see my conclusion on it. I'll give you... <laughs> give you a summary at the end actually but um basically antibiotics versus steroids this is something steroids can do i already mentioned the 17 alpha alkylated orals if you have something like an anadrol or something like a dianabol and you're using these perpetually around the clock like not only is your liver gonna get fucking nuked however this is going to have significant deleterious impact to your appetite your gut health etc now if somebody is having like nuked their gut microbiome with antibiotics multiple times now again like remember how he mentioned how ridiculous of his exposure to antibiotics he had and then after that his stomach was never the same adding anabolic steroids on top of that through oral androgens is that something a guy who's having gut problems and lack of appetite would be doing that would exacerbate things no that'd be fucking idiotic so if anyone was going to say this was caused by steroid use or exacerbated significantly like frankly no bodybuilders would be able to assimilate their food properly that are stepping on an ifbb stage and actually get fucking yoked because they would never be able to eat and put down the food they do while on copious amounts of exogenous injectables so not only would it be stupid for this guy to be using oral alpha 17 alpha alkylated orals which i highly doubt he is but above and beyond that, he'd be using injectable agents that are very, very way more well tolerated on his digestive system and would be significantly less problematic, if not totally benign, relative to his digestive stress. So is androgenic signaling going to help a situation? No, but do I think it's contributing to it to such an extent that if this guy was natty, that it would somehow like resolve his issues? No, I don't. I don't think his anabolic use that he may or may not be doing, which like, you know, be a fucking make an educated guess and if you really want to see see my breakdown of what my educated guess is go watch my video from the 29th i think the uh the hook in the video speaks for itself everyone at the highest levels uh for the most part is on something you know like uh like our team is pretty much like the only people who really i think don't use steroids to a certain degree so anyways take from that what you will but 
As far as, you know, circling back to the stomach issues, I do not think it's caused by anabolic steroids. I don't think it's significantly exacerbated by anything he's doing. I think he'd be a fucking idiot to be using oral 17 alpha alkylated agents like halotestin pre-workout or anadrol pre-workout or winstrol, d-ball, fucking anything. Oral metanolone, fucking superdrol, any of that shit, there's no way he would be using if he's having appetite issues when you could otherwise yield significant effects Similar to that in a muscle building acute force production aspect from injectable agents, you would not be doing that whatsoever. So aside from the anabolics themselves, he mentioned how he has bile reflux or gastroparesis or a combination of the two. To me, bile reflux, as far as, you know, I actually discussed this with Leo and Steve way back on a Super Physiological Man podcast and we talked about how um, like taurine deficiency, using something like a Tudka, not only supportive of liver health, you guys are probably familiar with it for its um, use in bodybuilders who are on 17 alpha alkylated oral agents to not you know, attenuate some of the liver stress, but in general as a liver support, it's very, very useful. And having that like taurine activated Udka, I believe it's called, is what would otherwise be useful for bile excretion and actually encouraging proper bile flow because otherwise having this reflux into your stomach is going to be problematic from a digestive aspect. So is he, you know, supplementing with that? I would fucking imagine so. I can't imagine he would have overlooked something that basic um, given that that is one of the two diagnoses apparently. The second one being gastroparesis, meaning he's having delayed gastric emptying and he's not getting his, uh, like basically shit is getting backed up not like literal shit, but like the food in the stomach is not getting digested as fast as it should. And like the first thing I thought of when I was thinking of that is low stomach acid. Is he, you know, obviously the antibiotics maybe are the catalyst to the situation, but having low stomach acid as a byproduct maybe is having an issue where he's not breaking down pathogens properly, or he's not giving his, his body the ability to break them down properly. And he's having this backflow essentially of like small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And he's getting like not a sufficient breakdown of proteins as well as pathogens that are entering into his stomach as a result of low stomach acid and that's where something like you know something even more exacerbating of that would be the traditional prescription of things like proton pump inhibitors to attenuate get uh gerd you know you think that your uh like acid reflux is caused by high stomach acid you would think you know that's a common um or like misconception by a lot of doctors out there and you get prescribed a fucking proton pump inhibitor and then you end up with even worse issues after that or you get prescribed something like you know an antacid or something like that and it ends up you know to try and relieve the acid reflux feeling, but it, in reality, it's just a result of low stomach acid, which is paradoxical to what you think by the actual manifestation of feelings that you get from the acid reflux. So at the end of the day, when you're letting, I don't know, if he actually has low stomach acid, for example, this may be something that is readily attenuated by something like a betaine, HCL, and pepsin supplement, which would otherwise actually, like here's an actual graphical representation of like purported benefits, this is only going to benefit you if you don't have a healthy stomach pH. But for individuals with gastroparesis and delayed gastric emptying, this may be one of the main root causes. If you don't have a healthy stomach pH and it's low in acidity, not enough pepsin to actually break shit down, you're not going to be getting actual breakdown to actually assimilate nutrients into your body and you're going to be getting that the pathogen buildup that could lead to something like SIBO and other kind of inflammatory conditions down the line through your GI that may otherwise be something contributing to his overall symptoms. And when he has these intestinal cramps, like it is literally his immune system attacking his fucking intestinal tract essentially through a result of like not properly assimilated slash undigested slash backed up shit that needs to be attenuated through proper promotion of a healthy um, gut microbiome and stomach acidity and all of these other things that like cumulatively help you actually digest your food properly. So again, Using something like a betaine HCL with pepsin, you know, you promote healthy stomach pH, enhance protein, vitamin absorption, reduce GERD, food allergy and gallstone symptoms, supports heart health, you know, all these other things, satellite interactions that are kind of less relevant, but ultimately something like a, like a stomach acid test, I believe it's called. I did a video a while ago. This is a bit of an oversimplification by the way, but ultimately like I think leaky gut is definitely one of the things contributing to his issues. I don't think it's a result of like anadrol fucking abuse. I think something like this, I don't think this is gonna like resolve, but it's definitely worth looking at and it may otherwise be a big factor fixing leaky gut with one simple supplement. In this video, I basically break down how low stomach acid can be very problematic. And there are so many cases of people with gastroparesis literally talking about how it was caused by proton pump inhibitors and low stomach acid resulting in the delayed gastric emptying because it's just fucking sitting there not being broken down properly. 
and then leading to that backup and a lot of issues. And especially with the amount of food he's eating to try and maintain his body weight, because again, trying to gain weight and maintain his weight is one of his biggest issues. So he has mentioned how he's consistently eating certain foods to try and, and like consistently around the clock, trying to maintain his body weight and or increase it. And he has a very difficult time doing it. So again, having something like time restricted eating in there, not conducive to his body composition goals whatsoever in the short term, but in the long term might actually give his body the rest it needs to then deal with some of this shit properly to then rebuild his system and get back to a state of being able to assimilate everything properly. But this would be a start ensuring adequate Stomach acidity and being able to break down proteins and assimilate everything properly would be one of the first primary objectives, in my opinion. Adding in something like a tub cut to help with bile excretion. All of these things cumulatively are going to be necessary. I think adding in like free radical scavengers, antioxidants to help with the autoimmune attack essentially happening on his intestines, presumably. Um, and then evaluating things like, um, like feeding the gut microbiome properly, because presumably him nuking it with antibiotics is what has led to the situation to begin with. So repopulating it with things that are during that time restricted eating window slash elimination diet section, ideally where you are eliminating problematic foods um, and giving your body a chance to actually self-regulate and actually rest. Maybe you're going to lose a significant amount of weight during that time, but it otherwise gives your body ability to actually get back to a homeostasis slash healthy set point rebuild and repopulate your gut microbiome with healthy bacteria and then actually get your body to a state where you can actually then assimilate like high amounts of food that you can then well tolerate again after getting everything back to a healthy set point that otherwise may be impossible with his current burden of current food choices on his system coupled with low stomach acidity creating the gastroparesis enhancing the fucking having the bile reflux like it's all cumulatively fucking him essentially so having something like repopulating, repopulating your gut microbiome with healthy prebiotics, these could be things like inulin, these could be things like uh, butyrate, this could be shit like having a high quality probiotic slash prebiotic, prebiotic formula like seed is something that I'm actually gonna plug into this video right now. Quick side tangent from the video with a actually very relevant sponsor of the channel. This is a new sponsor guys and I've been waiting for an opportunity to present it to you guys. It's Seeds. Symbiotic, probiotic plus prebiotic. And the reason I'm so excited about it is because two years ago, I heard on a podcast, Ben Greenfield's podcast to be specifically, he had a long conversation with a man named Raja, who is the co-founder of Seed. And they basically broke down in elaborate detail the clinical evidence to support the efficacy of the unique strains chosen in this probiotic plus prebiotic formula, why they were chosen, the lackluster shortcomings of all of the probiotic supplements in the industry, and I was convinced by the end of it because that is something that I was heavily interested in and have been for many a few years at this point in the ever continuing quest for optimization, health, vitality, quality of life, performance, etc. Finding the best way to reinforce the integrity of my gut microbiome and the basically just performance in general. And I unfortunately went to the website and found that they did not ship to Canada at the time and I was quite disappointed. So when this company actually came and reached out to me relatively recently and asked to sponsor the podcast, I was stoked, dude. I was like, fuck, I can finally get my hands on this stuff and um, see what it's all about because I've been trying to get this stuff for a long time and I'm glad that like not only can I actually get it now, but they're actually on board and supporting my brand at the same time. So it's like a huge win-win for me because um, I've been waiting for a fucking minute on this stuff. And also, if you don't know, I've actually talked about this formula in passing multiple times on the Super Physiological Man podcast with Steve and Leo. Um, I couldn't actually find a lot of uh, our old conversations, but I did dig up this. This is from March of 2021. Leo and I were going back and forth talking about cognitive enhancement, optimizing my nootropic and you know mental acuity stack essentially and we've been talking about seed for a while you can see here if we're talking about if you aren't taking seed probiotic the only legitimate one that i can find at the moment blah 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 a bunch of other stuff we were talking about at the time you're leaving a lot on the table in terms of inflammation and brain function so we were just going back and forth talking about you know different ways i can optimize my routine and whatnot and uh, this is something we've been talking about for a while now like well before this company ever reached out so it's very very um, fortuitous timing if that is the proper word to go along with this very great timing that they've reached out to me and we're now partnering Ooh. up so if you don't know seed symbiotic is a pre and probiotic two-in-one capsule that supports your gut health skin health and a lot more so there are 
24 clinically and scientifically studied strains, the first of its kind, not to mention they're sustainably delivered every month. In your first purchase, you'll get a glass jar that is infinitely refillable. Your monthly refills are delivered in a compostable, biodegradable, and recyclable packaging. So obviously that's, you know, a scripted part of the uh, the read there, but honestly, like this is, from what I have seen personally, the most clinically backed um, pre and probiotic product that you can possibly find on the market. And that's why, again, I'm really excited about integrating them into the channel. The Daily Symbiotic by Seed was developed for multiple different things beyond just digestive health. I don't think a lot of people realize how much the gut brain axis, as well as other satellite functions in the body have to do with your um, gut health, gut microbiome, etc. And it is a very new and to be honest, under-researched area of human biology. And it's exciting that a company has actually dug into this and found some specific attributes and strains that are highly relevant to actually deploy and aren't just based on absolute nonsensical picking random things out of a hat and assuming they're going to work because that's what a lot of probiotic products actually do in the market. So this product offers an array of other systemic benefits, including gastrointestinal health. It supports digestive health to maintain regularity, ease bloating, can alleviate occasional constipation, gut barrier integrity, helps maintain healthy gut barrier function and integrity, gut immune function, supports healthy gut immune function and crosstalk between immune and intestinal cells. Cardiovascular health promotes heart health, supports healthy intestinal recycling of cholesterol and bile, Dermatological health supports healthy skin. Micronutrient synthesis supports folate, vitamin B9 production via intestinal synthesis of bioactive forms of folate. As far as what's in it, it is a 24 strain broad spectrum probiotic and prebiotic formulated for digestive gut immunity and additional systemic benefits like the ones I just mentioned in that list above with 53.6 billion active fluorescent units are comprised in this product, breaking down an array of different probiotic blends essentially that cumulatively come up with this symbiotic formula. And as far as how it's delivered, it's actually featuring technology that is new in the probiotic prebiotic space. It has a two-in-one via cap delivery system and it's basically a capsule in a capsule which protects against stomach acid, digestion enzymes, and bile salts for viability through digestion. Um, this means that the probiotics will actually make it to the end of the small intestine for delivery into the colon. As far as what it's comprised of, it has a prebiotic outer capsule. It's made from Indian pomegranate and the outer capsule serves as a barrier to oxygen, moisture, and heat. No refrigeration necessary, which is quite nice for a symbiotic that a lot of other companies, frankly, would not be able to replicate the same technology to equate to that outcome and have completely random choices of probiotic strains and oftentimes do require refrigeration during transit to avoid um, complete degradation of the product. And as far as the inner capsule, it's a probiotic proprietary formulation comprised of clinically and scientifically studied strains characterized at academic institutions and research partners in Italy, Spain, Belgium, the US, and Japan. It's not of animal or soil origin and it's bio-fermented in Europe. It's sustainably delivered monthly. Each component of the refill system is designed to protect the daily symbiotic and be gentler on earth. So for example, the shipping box is constructed from ecological paper made from algae. Um, the bio-based tray it comes in is made of renewable ingredients such as starch, natural fibers, and water. And as far as the glass bottle it comes in, it's infinitely recyclable, but obviously the less they create, the lower the impact. So keeping your jar is what's recommended and monthly refills comes in a home compostable bio-based pouch that keeps oxygen and moisture out while being planet safe using entirely natural insulator made from US grown non-GMO cornstarch. It's biodegradable, backyard compostable, edible and dissolves in water. So personally, why do I use this stuff? Honestly, I was majorly convinced by the podcast way back in 2019. And I had already been researching pretty heavily into promoting healthy gut microbiome, what kind of benefits it may have, the gut brain access, which often goes overlooked and frankly isn't well understood to begin with. And having a company that actually went deep into the research to find clinically backed strains that made sense, like you've probably heard me touch on um, some of the strains specifically for hair loss prevention, you know, what utility and or, you know, therapeutic promise they may hold, like the stuff they've dug into in terms of the benefits of each of these individual strains and how they may support some of the um, satellite interactions and systemic effects that I mentioned earlier. I don't think any company really comes close right now. And that is why I am, you know, happy to feature them and integrate them into the channel. As far as getting your um, first monthly supply, you can get 15% off of Seeds Daily Symbiotic by clicking the link in the description below and using code Derek at checkout. Um, it'll save you 15% off and it obviously helps, you know, support the brand. 
gives back to a company that's doing good things in my opinion and is at the top of the game when it comes to pre and probiotic formulation. So I'm happy to bring another sponsor to the channel that you know aligns closely with a lot of the values I have um, and the things that heavily interest me and have for years. And it's not just something that I'm throwing at you guys as a result of you know a high offer or something like that. Rather, it's something that I believe in, use myself, or otherwise, you know, strongly believe in the utility of or the therapeutic applications potentially. Uh, but this is something I actually use myself. I'm through my um, first 30 days personally, and I'm probably like 15 days deep into my next refill. So if you guys wanna check it out, it's in the description below and use code Derek, save 15% off your first month supply and back to our regularly scheduled programming. Like that is a product that I use personally too, to actually encourage a healthy gut microbiome. Like that kind of stuff, is going to be quite useful in rebuilding and repopulating to actually get your state of GI health to where it needs to be to actually tolerate some of the shit he's trying to do with his body that otherwise is above and beyond like the pay grade of his fucking stomach essentially right now. But ultimately, maybe it might boil down to like, I don't know, has he introduced a BT and HDL and pepsin supplement, done, done a stomach acid challenge to actually see where he's at? I don't know, like I would imagine there's no way the amount of people that are helping him haven't looked at stuff that's basic, but as far as like actually elaborating on, is this a result of steroid use or is it a result of fucking huge amounts of androgen abuse? No, I don't think it is. I think this is a result of an actual health issue and I hope he gets it rectified because this is something that is going to be debilitating if he doesn't. And the fact that he's performed the way he has up to date with those issues, obviously, you know, probably reinforces the credibility of a lot of his statements. Like I imagine this guy would be an even more lethal force for sure if he was able to actually eat properly and digest his food properly. This is not a result of abusing the fuck out of Anadrol. Like this is actually a health concern. I hope he gets it sorted. So anyways, that's my stance. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. All the comments help the algorithm. They're much appreciated. Like, subscribe. Check out my blog, moreplacemoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram, at moreplacemoredates. Facebook, Snapchat, BitChute, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below. My TRT clinic, all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home. Get high quality medical oversight from doctors who want to actually understand what kind of diagnostics and lab work you should be getting and how to interpret it and create an individualized protocol just for you. And this is not just resorting to pharmacology like your standard clinics do with their cookie cutter scripts of TRT, HCG, and the Nasterzol. Rather, this is actually making an individualized assessment based on your current needs, based on the diagnostics ordered by our clinic, based on what they deem is most useful and applicable for you and attenuating and or addressing any kind of imbalances or deficiencies via can be lifestyle manipulation, dietary changes, um, sleep hygiene protocol changes, like who fucking knows? It could be totally naturally reversible, for example, with the low T or a myriad of other hormone deficiencies or imbalances. It doesn't always boil down to just throw you on TRT. If you have a fucking you know, 350 and you're in your 20s or something, maybe there's something very blatantly obvious in your life that could otherwise be rectified. For example, if you have a major fucking gut microbiome disturbance like Gordon Ryan does, you know that's stuff we actually specialize in and are able to kind of give a more individualized, um, elaborate insight into as opposed to most clinics that frankly just don't do anything above and beyond basic endocrinology. And frankly, a lot of them just don't even understand how to prescribe TRT, let alone delve into things as complex as autoimmune issues, um, genetic predispositions, polymorphisms, etc. That is stuff that we pride ourselves in is educating our patients, high quality information, and that's where we make the bread and butter. Majority of our money is through the consults and the lab work as opposed to the you know, getting as many strips of fucking TRT in and out the door. So check us out if you want a high quality doctor who understands how to optimize and um, enhance your quality of life, health, vitality, etc. Um, it is in the video description below and I wish there was something like this available years ago when I would go fucking, you know, hands and knees to get a fucking basic lipid panel for my local doctor who would basically shit on me for trying to be proactive about, our, about my health. Preventative medicine is the name of the game and what we pride ourselves on. And I highly recommend you get a high quality doctor in your camp ASAP if you don't already. As well, Gorilla Mind, nootropic formulas, Gorilla Mode, pre-workout formulas, and design myself from scratch. As well as anything else I'm associated with, it is all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.